too much. I swear that these niggas they be doing too much. I ain't got it. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Money Yachty TV, man. Today we got the fallout between Lil Dirk's OTF and Chief Keef's GBE from the Insider Hotspot YouTube channel, man. Now, we did a few videos like this already, man, but this one dropped, and fuck it, I'ma react to it again, because listen, Chief Keith and Dirk, man, you talk about two people with such a huge influence, man, at the height of Drill. I feel like Drill still hasn't even reached his peak yet, but these two was like the pioneers of this shit that really transformed the rap game into what it is today. And you know they had they falling out now. I believe they on. I don't think they cool like that. I don't think they like ever gonna be cool like they once were. But I think it's kind of more mutual now. But yeah, it was a lot of a lot of messy shit that went down, man. So listen, we ain't doing no more talking. Let's jump right into it, man. <laughs> And that's how I throw the L's out for them niggas. You don't fuck with me, then fuck them. My own niggas, I don't trust them. Come on, man, listen. Some of y'all don't know about that dirt, boy. Hold on, now. Come on. And that's how, that's how you, you call snakes. But if you if you be a boss like you say you're supposed to be, and you feed your team and take care of your main team, they not gonna let nobody in to even to even harm you or even do nothing to you in the wrong way. Man, I recently used you and Chief Keith or went back and forth quickly on, on Twitter and then to the interview on the radio. Now, where is the, the thing with you and you Keith stand right now? Um, ain't, ain't nothing with us. Ain't, ain't no enemies, ain't no friends. This whole situation. Never stole your chain. You know, Boss T snatched your chain off your neck, little Hey, you want this chain, boy? You know what we at, boy? 300. We the real 300. Yeah, gang chain. Shit. I'm getting your shit. What up, gang? Back with the real. You know what's the deal. For some reason, the people you start with don't always be the people to end with. In hip hop and the streets, this seems to be even more true. We've seen it in most of these stories. Day ones turn ops and sworn enemies. In Chirac, this was the case between Lil Durk and Chief Keef and their crew, OTF and GBE. And from recent events, it looks like the bad blood is escalating again. What caused their beef? Why did Chief Keith Escalating again? I thought they was cool now. It looks like the bad blood is escalating again. What caused their beef? Why did Chief Keith leave Chicago? Which affiliate jumped ship to the other gang? So much to get into, but you know the vibes. Let's chop it up and break it down and see where it all went wrong. The two started off as youngins in the city, making a name for themselves ganging in the trenches. Chief Keith was often walking through the city with his cousin, Fredo Santana, Lil Reese, R. and Vaughn, RIP. Fredo was the only one. Fredo used to be in the building. Chief Keith used to be in the building. Even at that young? Huh? Yeah, even when we was that little, yeah, all of us used to be in the building. Oh, yeah. oh, so you knew Chief Keith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you guys were like? We was kids. And he had guns and hands that could two-piece you into a power bomb. Dirk, on the other oh. hand, was more reserved. His movements were more mm -hmm. under the radar but his reputation in the streets was taking hold as the youngin as a silent but strategic demon in his eyes was normally the look of a person whose soul has lost emotion for human life both keith and dirk would come together growing up when rap became a way to escape the harsh realities of the trenches oh that shit scared the fuck out of me that damn cut scene whatever the fuck that was would come together growing up when rap became a way to escape the harsh realities of the trenches dirk can be seen toting the strap in chief keith's 2011 music video for the hood cut, bang with us. Yo, look how young these told the strap in Chief Keef's 2011 music video. Dog, these niggas was young. Like, look where we at 10 years later, man. That shit crazy. For the hood cut, bang with others like Reese, Tato, and Fredo Santana. Bang, 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 bang. Let Sam flow bang, 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 bang. Around that time, DJ Academics brought a spotlight on the hood politics. Detailing the rise of some of hip hop's most iconic stars from the shy. 300 became the squad that linked everyone from around Keep's home, Lamron, together. 300 is everybody. I'm just gonna say it like that. Um, There's a lot of raps you got. Um, Rondo, SD, of course, you know, Fredo, Reese, um, who else? Black, Nunu. It's a lot, it's a lot of rappers. By 2012, 
Dirk dropped a hit, L's Anthem, and Chief Keef's Viral I Don't Like track featuring Lil Reese. Fun fact, on December 2nd, 2011, police responded to a call of shots fired in the 6100 block of South Indiana. Keith was spotted when they pulled up and he flashed the steel and dipped. After a high speed chase on foot and shots fired after Keith, he was eventually arrested and charged with three counts of aggravated assault with a firearm on a police officer, aggravated unlawful use of a weapon, and a misdemeanor charge of resisting arrest. A judge sentenced him to home confinement yeah, so at his grandmother's wild. house where he filmed the music video for I Don't Like. That didn't stop his glow up. Actually, everything seemed to be panning out in the music scene for the two rising artists from the shot. In 2013, Dirk signed a Def Jam and Chief Keef signed an Interscope for six mil over three years. Both were establishing their own labels. OTF. Six mil over three years. That's not bad. Two mil a year. Uh, some artists get caught in a deal where they got to do... Who signed? Somebody signed a deal. Damn, who was it? It was two million dollars, but they had to drop five albums. That was their contract. Their contractual obligation was five albums for two million dollars. That was a horrible deal. But for six mil for three years, that's not bad. Go for six mil over three years. Both were establishing their own labels. OTF, also known as Only the Family, and GBE, Glory Boys Entertainment, a last known as Glow Gang. We've seen them united, putting Chicago on the map. Now, let's get into how their beef was sparked. According to police reports, in 2011, Dirk caught his first gun charge and was found guilty of aggravated unlawful use of a weapon and sentenced to one year in prison. According to the Illinois Department of Corrections, he was released on parole on July 27, 2012, and was expected to complete the parole term on July 27. The problem between him and Keith would ignite in 2013 when Dirk found himself behind bars for a second yeah, gun charge. This where it get Reports messy. state that Dirk was picked up about 3 a.m. in the 7200 block of South Green Street after cops received a tip of a man in the area with a gun. Cops would pull up on Dirk at a car when he tossed the gun into the vehicle. Authorities recovered a loaded 40 caliber weapon and charged Dirk with unlawful use of a weapon by a felon and he was placed on a 100K bond. This was the turning point. Not yet reaping the profits of his Def Jam deal, Dirk allegedly hit up his homie Keith for 10 bands to cover the 10% required of the 100k bond so he could be free, but Keith never helped out. 10,000. Now at that time, Dirk was in a horrible deal with French Montana. I don't know what the deal, I don't know the details of the deal, but nigga, if you sign, I don't care. French Montana, yeah, he was the big, he was the huge artist at that time. Shout out French, he a legend in this shit. But... Dirk was in a bad deal. I can already tell. If he wasn't making no money like that at that point where he couldn't afford a $10,000 bond, nigga, that deal is a bad deal, my guy. Because what are you bringing in? Like, I don't know, man. But it, it started getting messy right here. Use of a weapon by a felon. He was placed on a 100K bond. This was the turning point. Not yet reaping the profits of his Def Jam deal, Dirk allegedly hit up his homie Keith for 10 bands to cover the 10% required of the 100k bond so he could be free, but Keith never helped out. From then, the rift only grew wider. Yeah. Looking back, it was kind of strange that everyone else was rallying for Dirk's freedom online, but, but Keith. instead, Chief Keith's tweet would be OTG, hashtag only the glow. Which but you can take that how you want to take it low key. I mean, even if it was animosity like OTF and, and you know, like the glow gang put together only the glow like you could have taken it anyway it was a play on dirk's otf only the family movement some speculate like that the tip united. off to the cops about the man with the gun could have been from keith's camp as a plan to fully take over and push dirk out keith's mm. mysterious tweet along with dirk from behind bars calling out dudes for snitching on them may support that theory <laughs> Dirk would finally post bail after a month and return to take aim at Sosa with a line from Keith's first day out song. Bad bitch, yeah, I'm bad bitch. Dismiss me, a yin cow. Keith would taunt Dirk yet again, posting OTG. At that point, Dirk let it be known who he rocks with and who's Fufu, shouting out Reese and Fredo for keeping it 100, then exposing all of what he felt was fake loyalty from Chief Keith and GBE. GBE Capo, RIP. Will respond with some threats of his own. Dirk will rebuttal, getting even darker with his tweets, revealing that Keith is only alive because of 300 and he can't come back to the block. 
Dirk will hit Keith under the belt by bringing up Keith, leaving his homie, D Rose, and T Slick behind bars instead of bailing them out. Dirk and you know, I, I, I spoke my piece on this, man. Not everybody agreed, and that's cool. But I spoke my piece on it. You know, I see it from both sides. One way, y'all are grown ass men. Chief Keith ain't obligated to pay for shit. But on the other hand, y'all in this lifestyle, y'all pledge this loyalty to each other. And when one of y'all really got it, and when I'm saying really got it, I mean you really got it like that. You know, you got to make sure your people straight. That's just how it's supposed to be. Like I said, it's tough, though. That's what I mean. Like, it's so messy of a situation. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Y'all let me know. I'm going to ask y'all this. Y'all let me know in the comments if your partner, your day one that you came up with before, man, y'all got, y'all was in the mud together as kids. They get arrested. Let's say you signed a deal, six mil, you get $2 million or $2 million right away your first year. His bond was 10K. Would y'all pay that? And be real. Don't just don't just cap for the, for the internet. Don't cap for YouTube. Being like, yeah, I'm going to do it. No, don't, don't cap. Be real. Would you pay it? Would you feel obligated to pay it? If that was your partner, your day one, you got $2 million. Would you pay 10000 to get him out? Would you pay your other, let's say, okay, let's say three homies. Three homies get arrested. Three of your partners arrested. You add up all they bond, it come to about 100K. You got two mil. Would you bond them out? Come on now. Answer, y'all answer me that in the comments. Like I'm telling you, it's a, it's a, it's a sticky situation, man. Tommy, D sticky. Rose, and T Slick behind bars instead of bailing them out. Dirk will leave with a warning, referencing Keith's beef with Soldier Boy. <laughs> Sosa being petty, taunted Dirk's 10K request that he turned down, then claimed the throne of Oblock. From there, it was up. Dirk would distance himself from any alliance to GBE. It's just like showing love. No, I ain't GBE, I'm OTF. They GBE, I'm OTF. The beef would escalate on two separate occasions, both with GBE on the losing net. At a show in 2013, GBE affiliate Ball Out got his chain snatched on stage. I'm sorry, you ain't taking my chain on stage. All the females in the crowd, you ain't taking my shit. I'll die behind my chain. You ain't gonna embarrass me like that in front of the crowd, nigga. You could have did it backstage, nigga. We could have, you could have did it in the, in, the, in the backstage in the hallway. If you wanted to take my shit, you gonna do it in front of all my fans, nigga. That is was not gonna happen. Have me out here looking like nah. Crazy thing is that the chain that got snatched from him, he snatched from Soldier Boy in the altercation. Dirk's tweet was talking about earlier. According to Mubu Crump, who was cool with Dirk back then, this broke the friendship with Reese and Dirk because they speculated Dirk orchestrated it and Reese allegedly choked out Dirk backstage. Yeah, that... He broke down what happened and even seemed to get a confirmation from Reese verifying he choked out Dirk. And then, next thing you know, Reese, he like, what that cat that on beat me? Jump over there and choke him. I'm like, that. But something else in his video. They did Soldier Boy dirty. Soldier Boy shouldn't even been fucking around with these niggas, man. You get your chain snatched and the nigga that snatched your chain get it snatched from him. Yo, stood out. Uh -huh. Crump stated that the scenario played out because they earlier stole some <laughs> items from GBE and were exposed for it. I'm not sure if this was referring to the next altercation that happened, but it's really familiar to the report cops released about the Black Disciples having internal beef. Goons from Oblock and OTF affiliate gang THF46 broke into Keith Cozart, also known as Chief Keith's Northfield crib. He was renting with his manager at the time. One person, Terrence Smith, was hit up during the burglary before they stole Keith's silver 2010 Jeep Grand Cherokee and escaped. Law enforcement investigations led to three suspects, one of which was Sosa's longtime homie, Tyree oh, Davis, also known as Boss Top. In an interview, O-Block member Ocho confirmed one of the guys being hit as reported by cops. I think one of our guys had got shot, you feel me? And, um, with, with some shit, I don't, I don't really know what really happened. But it was an altercation and some shit happened. And was, I guess it was Glow Game versus the block. And then, you know, you shot one of the guys, you feel me? So, like, you know, and the guy, one of the guys could have lost their life, you feel me? And it was just like. You, know. you could feel Chief Keeps hurt in a series of tweets that followed some time after the altercation, stating that he glowed up Boss Top 
to see him shine, yet he stole down to his daughter's clothes and deodorant that cleaned that boy out for everything he had. Keith was done with everyone's BS and made it known he was talking about Boss Top, tagging him in a tweet as the thief. Call it snitching or whatever, but you can tell how disappointed and hurt Keith was. That's why I feel like Keith, that's why he don't fuck with nobody, honestly. She Keith all the way out in Los Angeles. This nigga don't fuck with nobody anymore, man. His music videos, he in there solo dolo. He might have Tato or whatever, man. But he he don't fuck with nobody no more. Keith, call oh. it snitching or whatever, but you can tell how disappointed and hurt Keith was. For real, for real. Keith would distance himself from everything, moving away from his hood and making changes to his team. His manager that was also renting the house with him, Brandon Zerrer, was cut off from breaking the street code and reporting the altercation to the cops. King Von would chime in, revealing some key details in the beef. First, he tweeted that both Keith and his homie Capo chains got swiped during the altercation at his home, which led everyone to believe Keith and Capo had returned to the house while their stuff was being cleared out. Boss Top, Lil Dirk, and OTF affiliates, Clown GBE, posting up vids, stunting the spoils of their heist. Why you saying I broke in your house? Capo, hey, you want this chain, boy? You know what we at, boy? 300, we the real 300 yeah, gang. Dirk would diss Keith on wax, remixing Drake's hit track, Zero to 100 into zero to 300. And Chief Keith would also take shots with his track, All I Care About. King Von would later speak on the bad blood between the two, dealing back to what caused the chain snatching to occur. According to Von, O Block member Trey Five was locked up at the time and needed 25K to post bond. They hit up Chief Keith for the remaining 7,500 because they already put together 18K. Keith responded like he was looking down on them for not having 7,500, but promised he got him with the money but he never came through. That's when they snatched his chain to sell to get the money to bail their homie out. The beef between Dirk and Keith would go back and forth. One moment being squashed. A lot of people have been tweeting me to ask you about uh, your relationship with Chief Keith because of things that have been going back and forth. What is the status of that right now? Uh, it was just a little bit of words. Ain't, ain't nothing major though. Yeah, ain't nothing. Then sparked up again. What's up with you and Keith? Uh, is there still tension between you and him? Um, it wasn't. It was, uh, at first it was just Twitter, and then it was just phone calls, everybody trying to get everybody back together. So when Tiger and the game song dropped it, that he posted on his page. And I'm like, hey. Yeah, I remember that. When when the game and Dirk was beefing with each other, and, and Dirk actually called Chief Keith out on that, and was like, you letting this nigga disrespect. Like, so when the Tiger and the game song dropped it, that he posted on his page. And I'm like, he ain't disrespect me only, he disrespect the whole Chicago. Yeah, the whole like he's around this shit, so. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to do with me at the end of the day, you got to do with everybody. So, uh, I mean, you gonna reach out to, to do anything, or are you not? I ain't reaching out to him. Okay. It's over with. Then, being squashed again. So, uh, how did y'all finally, like, really squash it and kind of, like, put it all to rest? Jerry, FaceTime, I, I FaceTime him. FaceTime me, you know what I'm saying? We talked it out. Hold a grill, hold, I had a grudge, he had a grudge. You know what I'm saying? We killed it, put it in the middle of the flow. You know what I'm saying? It's over with now. So, we working. You know I'm saying? We giving the fans what they want to see. They've been wanting to see that for a long time. And reuniting on stage. Everything finally seemed cool between the two in their camp. Earlier this year, Dirk was seen riding around to Keith's music and even rocked out to Sosa's massive hit, Benito, while performing with Pooh Shiesty. But it seems, just as everyone was cool again, the bad blood was still lingering around. At the 2021 Rolling Loud concert, security officers spilled the beans on the altercation that just barely got averted between OTF affiliate, Muwap, and Chief Keith. In an exclusive interview with Fuchs TV, the security guard said Muwap and another OTF affiliate, speculated to be Boss Top, was plotting on taking Chief Keith's chain when a female officer present overheard and called him back up while Keith was performing on stage. Muwap was sent away from the venue, stopping the situation from happening. The Yo, I did not, I didn't even hear about that. So, Muwap and supposedly Boss Top was about to snatch Chief Keef Chain this year? So, it's still, it's still smoke with these niggas. Present That's crazy. Over. Heard and called him back up while Keef was performing on stage. Muwap was sent away from the venue, stopping the situation from happening. The security guard also posted up the pic with him and Tato he took. They got him close enough to see the situation go down. Muwap would hint to the situation on live sometime later, calling GBE to police, thinking they called 12 on him. Oh, BDN, y'all chop on that glow game shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, 
Damn, all these ass 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 all day. It might have been a blessing in disguise for 12 to eavesdrop because things have finally seemed to die down. Even if Dirk and Keith still ain't on friend terms, I prefer they coexist on their own lane and continue lifting up Chirac. Definitely. Hope they can settle their differences and reunite because it would be major for both to collab on a regular and totally squash their beef. Thanks for kicking it with your boy. Don't forget to subscribe to- I, I'll say, man, you know, I don't think they cool. I mean, they, I think they cool right now. I don't think it's like, you know, I don't think they fuck with each other like they used to a decade ago, but it would be dope if they would come together, do a little verses or even just, you know, another project, do a project together. Or maybe do a, you know, do a little tour or something, man. It's all about the money at the end of the day. It's a business, man. The fallout between Lil Dirk's OTF and Chief Keef's GVE. Link down below in the description for y'all to check it out in its entirety. Uninterrupted, y'all new to the channel. Y'all rock with me on daily reaction videos, man. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me to the next video. I'll see y'all then. Thank you for watching Money Yachi TV. I'm out. I ain't gotta do too much. I swear that these niggas they be doing too much. I ain't gotta do.